Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me, my name is XB and I'm a first year medical student at Monash University in Melbourne, Australia. Today we're going to be doing a video addressing the frequently asked questions of the UCAT. Now, the UCAT 2022 testing period has concluded for Australian and New Zealand citizens, but I know heaps of people are probably going to be starting their preparation for the UCAT for next year very soon. So I thought we would go through some of the big questions that people might have going into preparing for the UCAT next year. Today I'm joined by my classmate, Zach. Um, and he is someone that I've met this year, obviously. He also sat the UCAT, clearly. Um, so do you want to tell us a bit about yourself? I graduated, I, like I'm a first year medical, Monash medical student, as well as XC. And I scored a 3,330 in the UCAT in 2021. And um, as well as an ATAR of 99.35. So really knowledgeable guy here. Um, and he has lots of wisdom to share with you guys. So, without further ado, let's get into the questions. So the first question we've got here is something that I think a lot of people will probably think when they first look at the UCAT, um, and that question is, how long is my UCAT score valid for? Just so people are aware, you can sit the UCAT once every year, and the earliest you can sit it is in year 12. That means you can't sit it in year 11, or you can't sit it if you're not applying for medicine. Um, so simple answer to that is you can do it once a year and it's only valid for that testing cycle or for that year. So the next question is, what do I do if I get a low UCAT score? So for people who do get a low UCAT score, there are three main options to, to do. And the first option is sort of going for a postgraduate medicine degree. So that involves doing an undergraduate degree at any university and then applying for postgraduate medicine through the GAMSAT. And the second option would be reseeing the UCAT. So sometimes some, some universities allow you to um, start a course and then reseed the U UCAT and still apply to a direct entry medicine program. But other universities such as Monash University require you to not have started tertiary education. So that means you would have to take a gap year if you were to go for this method. And the last method is sort of looking at applying to different universities that don't actually use the UCAT. So there's a few of those, such as the University of Tasmania, um, James, James Cook University and Bond University, as well as Griffith University, which don't actually use the UCAT. So th these ones will be based on um, ATAR, and in the case of James Cook, an interview as well. Another big question people probably have for people that are seeing the UCAT for the first time is what is a good UCAT score? And the answer to that really, really depends because when you're applying, there's different circumstances and there's different entry options depending on where you live, um, whether you're Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander, descent, uh, etc. But uh, in general, if let's just say for the state of Victoria, for Monash University, if you're a non-rural metro um, student that is applying for Monash University without any CIS, um, just for an unbonded place, uh, for a Victorian local, you'd be looking at very much a benchmark of around 2,900 out of 3,600. Now obviously this really shouldn't influence how hard you try because the goal is to get as high as you possibly can. Um, and the reason again why I say it differs is because for interstate students, for example, to Monash, the requirements oftentimes are a lot higher, maybe in the 3,200 um, plus area, which does make it a bit more competitive and it is something to keep in mind when you're thinking about your applications. Uh, but yes, in general, I would say that for any medical student, um, that is non-rural, that is applying for any university, a really, really solid benchmark is that 2,900 to 3,000 uh, score. So you do have interview offers by some universities. Another really commonly asked question that people probably are thinking is, is Medify or Medentry better for my preparation? And my answer to that is you probably want to check out the previous video I've made a couple months ago detailing all the UCAT services and comparing them. In short, Medify and Medentry, they're all pretty much the same thing. Um, so really the best way to look at it is what's the most affordable option for me and what's the most realistic for the amount of time spent that I'm going to be spending to prepare for the exam. Um, and I would highly recommend you guys check that video out if you haven't. Um, it should be in the corner here somewhere. Right, so the next question we have is, when is the best time to start my UCAT preparation? And I think the best time to start would be the summer holidays. And the reason for that is, obviously with year 12, there's other commitments such as your VCE, if you're Victorian, or, or just your year 12 studies in general. And that's obviously quite a lot of work to do. So it can be hard to juggle the UCAT and your year 12 studies. So obviously, um, throughout the year with year 12, there's a lot of 
other, other commitments you have to be making with your, your top studies. So it's good to start the UCAT early um, to be able to study it when you don't have those other commitments to be doing, to juggle with. And the second point would be um, starting the UCAT early allows you to familiarise yourself with the test because this is a test that is unlike any other test you would have sat before. So it's good to sort of just get a, get a rough idea of, of what the test involves, the, the five different subtests, and just to have a bit of a play around, see where you're at, see how much um, you need to improve before um, the year begins and before you sort of get slammed with all your work with year 12. All right, so we might wrap it up there for today. Definitely a bit of a short one. Um, unfortunately, my camera battery is about to run out of battery and it's uh, we're at, at the university, so I can't charge it. But this is a really good opportunity for you guys to leave any questions that you might have for the UCAT or the medicine entry process in general. Um, and what we can do is we'll have a look at those questions um, and then we can hopefully make another video answering some of your more tailored and targeted questions towards your UCAT preparation. Um, but apart from that, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video um, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thanks guys. Thank you.